Hi, I'm Bruce Miller from Rules of Thumb. We're the ones who created NetWeaver. I guess I get to go first because NetWeaver was the first EMDS engine. At the start, EMDS wasn't much more than just a NetWeaver-powered ARC extension. EMDS has grown a lot since then, and so has NetWeaver. Back in the late 80s, we had knowledge engineering sessions where we would get together with a bunch of scientists or other domain experts and we would brainstorm on how to interpret ground conditions from basic data. The immediate product of these sessions was stacks of dependency networks written out on flip charts. It was up to some of us unfortunate coder types to convert these hand-drawn scribbles into readable logic scripts that our engine of the time could use. Well, you hand code a few of these and it's not too bad, especially if they don't change. But after a while, you have lots of them and worse yet, you have to make lots of edits. In late 91, we picked up a contract that involved coding hundreds of hand-drawn interlinked dependency networks written by a colleague, and every week he'd send me a fat manila envelope stuffed with the new ones, and worse yet, changed ones. So we created NetWeaver Developer to automate the process. In EMDS, NetWeaver is primarily used to evaluate some condition on the landscape, but that's not all it's good for. Some of the applications we've worked on utilizing NetWeaver are a tool to predict Siberian moth outbreaks, a tool to rank wheelchair suitability for a given client, and another to optimize the chosen wheelchair for the client's environment, a tool for assessing the readiness of the hundred or so countries who deal with desert locust outbreaks and to help them build realistic contingency plans, and a companion tool that aggregates regional readiness and identifies systemic problems. A tool to evaluate and identify sub-Saharan communities that were likely to succeed at community-based natural resource management and to identify what they need to do to improve their success rates. A tool to identify soil classification from lab tests to the pedon level. A tool to diagnose honeybee issues and provide other management assistance to beekeepers and a tool to help rank budget line items as to the relative bang for the buck. So back to those dependency networks I mentioned a minute ago. Here's one from the Chuacon knowledge base that will be referenced in a later presentation. It represents what it takes to have biophysical factors of a stream reach in good condition. It combines results from five supporting topics, antecedent dependency networks, in NetWeaver parlance. In NetWeaver, the dependency network is the fundamental building block of a knowledge base, or as some call it, a logic model. A dependency network in its simplest form is a graphical representation of the relationship of data to some condition, expressed with primarily, but not limited to, Boolean operators to define that relationship. In this dependency network, there are five topics, dependency networks in their own rights, connected to the top through a Boolean AND node. They, in turn, work their way down to basic data. So you get more fundamental towards the bottom until you get down to the raw data. And you get more interpretive or abstract as you approach the top. That AND node in the middle is kind of special. In classic Boolean math, all five topics below it would have to be true for the all, overall topic to be true. And you would need to have all those supporting data just to get started. But by using fuzzy math, we can work with shades of true or false, in effect, evaluating on a continuum. NetWeaver takes it a step further and will evaluate expressions even in the absence of data. Of course, NetWeaver will let you know how much more data is needed to fully support its result. A key feature of dependency networks is that data needs are dependent on what data you already have. For example, if we input a temperature that is beyond this acceptable range, making the water temperature topic go false, the AND node will have all the data it needs to do a complete calculation. So when any node feeding the AND node is false, the AND node will be false and will be fully satisfied. However, if we change that temperature to an acceptable value, the water temperature topic now shows fully true, but the AND node now does not have all the data it would like. In fact, it reports that it still lacks 80% of the data. 
This is represented visually by the AND node's faded out color. And here is what you would see if you have a water temperature that isn't perfectly good, but isn't the worst. What may not be obvious at first is that we can use this feature to optimize our data collection. As you know, data comes with a cost, and some data comes pretty cheaply, while others can be quite costly. So start with the cheap data, you know the stuff that's probably already in your GIS. Then let that inform what data should be collected in any given place. Remember though, the data needed to be collected will differ from place to place based on what is already known there. Let me mention something about color schemes in NetWeaver. NetWeaver developer defaults to what we call a fuzzy stoplight coloring scheme. Red for false, green for true, yellow for undetermined. Values in between are ramped between those colors, and then the colors are faded towards white at the, as their missing data influences increase. This means that a white node means it doesn't have any data, so it can't really decide anything. There are, are a couple of other color schemes available if this one doesn't meet your purpose, and in EMDS you can use whatever color scheme you like. I guess by now you've figured out that NetWeaver uses fuzzy math. Even without the benefits already mentioned, fuzzy math is a good fit for describing natural processes. Nature has lots of smooth transitions from one condition to another. Are you really fully mature on your 18th birthday and not at all on the day before? Obviously your adultness is something that happens over time and is not as abrupt as a legal system would have us believe. Fuzzy math is also tolerant of our limitations to know precisely how to describe and measure nature. Is that stream too acidic at a pH of 6.8, or is it 6.85? Fuzzy math is tolerant of small differences in input. Fuzzy math helps us out in another, less obvious way. Before fuzzy math, we would have to build a dependency network to describe each category of condition for the topic, like poor, moderate, and good, or very low, low, medium, high, very high, etc. In practice, that gets to be awfully complicated, especially in the middle value conditions. We learned early on to define only the end condition, usually the optimal condition, rather than trying to define multiple categories of the condition. We use the fuzzy value to inform us how close we are to that end condition. In this case, how good is the stream condition? Now let's talk briefly about another feature of NetWeaver that can be really important especially in collaborative projects or projects that span multiple data sets collected at different times or by different methods or with different interpretations. Data drives all of our analyses and all of our projects. We want the best data we can get, but we can't always get what we want, but maybe we can get what we need. NetWeaver has a node for that, the sequential OR. In simplest terms, the sequential OR takes the value of the first node under it, left to right, that has sufficient data. In practice, you place the sources in order of their preference, left to right, with the preferred source first and the least last, maybe even a default value, if that makes sense. For each of these nodes, you set the weight of the node to reflect the minimum amount of data you will accept. 100% being the default. In this example, the dependency network defines when a lake is potentially acid deposition impacted, or in other words, it's affected by acid deposition and not by some other acid source such as volcanic activity or decaying vegetation. It uses acid neutralizing capacity, sulfates, nitrates, dissolved organic carbon, and lastly, pH in its evaluation. A direct sampling on site of the pH was preferred, but it wasn't always done. What's the next best available surrogate? Sum of base cations, and after that, a measure of conductivity. So in a perfect world, you'd have all three of the pH indicators, and the pH portion might look like this. Here it is using only the directly measured pH value. It ignores the other two. Now, if the directly measured pH value is missing, it will interpret from the sum of base cations. And if both pH and sum of base cations is missing, then it will interpret from the conductivity measure. So in practice, the sequential OR is a data selector 
that automates getting the best available data for your project. NetWeaver is a robust tool that has evolved over the years to solve real problems. It has many features that we did not cover here today given our limited time, but I tried to cover a few of the more important ones that I think might be useful to you, especially early on. We have an online help system with many video tutorials to help you get started with NetWeaver, and there are a bunch of more advanced topics there as well. Well, that wraps things up for me. Thank you for participating. Once again, my name is Bruce Miller. I can be contacted through the Rules of Thumb website or via email at bjmiller at rulesofthumb.com or just bjmiller at gmail.com. Thank you.